Hello chemists, this is Miss R and we're going to talk about stoichiometry today, continue to talk about stoichiometry. And we're going to look now at a mole mass problem. We're going to start with moles. We're going to be given 0.45 moles of silver nitrate and we're going to be asked how many grams of silver chloride will be precipitated in the reaction below. So first let's make sure this is a balanced equation. And it turns out that it's a little bit unbalanced. See you've got two chlorines here and you do have two chlorines here but you've got two calciums here and only one calcium here. So a correctly balanced equation I balanced this earlier. Two silver chloride plus one calcium nitrate. So that looks balanced. So now let's figure out if we've got this much silver nitrate, how many grams of silver chloride are we going to get? So let's start out with what we have. That's always what we do. 0.45 moles of silver nitrate over 1. Now we need to figure out the mole conversion from moles of silver nitrate to moles of silver chloride. And it turns out the coefficients in both those cases are 2. So it's 2 to 2. But another way to say 2 to 2 is just 1 to 1. So we're going to put the silver nitrate on the bottom. That's 1 mole of silver nitrate. is going to give you 1 mole of silver chloride. And that's, I put 1 to 1 because 2 to 2 is the simplifies down to 1 to 1. Now we've got moles. We've canceled out moles of silver nitrate. Now we've got our answer in moles of silver chloride, except we want grams of silver chloride. So now we have to convert from 1 mole of silver chloride has, what does it have in it? Well, we need to go to the periodic table here. I have one in an old chemistry book. And we need to figure out the atomic mass of silver. It's right above gold, and that's 107.87. We'll call it 87. Then we need to figure out the atomic mass for chloride. And we look under chloride on the periodic table. Remember, it's the big number at the bottom of the box on the periodic table. That's the atomic mass. And so for sodium chloride, we add the mass of silver plus the mass of chloride. I'm going to do that on my calculator here. 107.87 plus 35.45. So the molar mass of sodium chloride is 143.32. I just added these two numbers. I get 143.32. And that's grams per mole. So now we can cancel out moles of silver chloride, and our answer is going to be in grams. So now we just have to do the math which is pretty easy because a lot of these numbers are ones. We have a one here, 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 and here. So let's pick out the actual numbers and just do the math without units right here. So it's 0.45 times 143.32, and it's all over one, so we don't really need to write that. So all we have to do is put in our calculator. I already have the 143.32 from adding it up. And I need to multiply that times 0.45, and that gives me 
0.49, and that's going to be grams of silver chloride. So the process here is you start with moles, and you switch from the moles of reactant to moles of product, and then you switch from moles of product to grams of product. So you have a couple conversion factors. You have the molar ratio here, and then you have the molar mass, which of course we get by going to the periodic table and looking up the atomic mass for each atom within a compound. So the second problem is just a little bit more complicated. It's starting with a mass and ending up with a mass. So we'll take this first mass, we'll convert it to moles, make that mo convert the moles using our from products to reactants, or you can go either way, reactants to products, and then convert the moles back to, to grams. So it's asking how many grams of barium hydroxide are precipitated from 14.5 grams of sodium hydroxide in the following reaction. So we start out with 14.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. What do we do when we don't know what to do? Well, we convert to moles. It's always a good idea when you have grams. Convert to moles. How do we do that? Well, we look at our coefficients. We start with sodium hydroxide. and We know we're going over here to barium hydroxide. And we want to make sure, take a quick look, make sure this is a balanced equation. It looks OK to me, so we can go ahead and move forward from there. This coefficient, since it's not written, is 1. So we have 1 mole of sodium hydroxide. We have to figure out the, oh, let's put that on top. That's what we want to convert to. So one mole of sodium hydroxide. How many grams is that? Let's figure that out by going to the periodic table. I'm going to look up sodium on the periodic table. I'm going to figure out the atomic mass of sodium, the atomic mass of oxygen, and the atomic mass of hydrogen and add them all up. So if you go to the atomic, or excuse me, the periodic table and you look up all of the different atomic masses, this is what you're going to find. If you add 22.9 plus 15.99 plus 1.01, you're going to get 39.99 grams per mole for NaOH. So now we can put that down here so we can cancel out grams. That's, I put grams down here and moles up here. I can cancel grams. And now we have moles. Now we need to go to, now we have moles of sodium hydroxide but we need moles of barium hydroxide, so we have to use our molar ratio. We put our two sodium hydroxide down here, and we put our one barium hydroxide up here. And I just got this from looking at the coefficients in the balanced reaction right here. I'm looking at the coefficients of the two the reactant and the product that we're looking at in this particular problem. So now I can cancel out sodium hydroxide and now we're working in barium hydroxide. And I have moles, these are both moles of course, but I want grams of barium hydroxide. So now I need to go do this. I need to go find the molar mass of barium hydroxide. Go to the periodic table, and I need to look up 
the atomic mass of barium, the oxygen and hydrogen. We already know the oxygen and the hydrogen from up here. I just need to go look up barium. So in order to find the molar mass of barium hydroxide, I went to the periodic table and I looked up the atomic uh, mass of barium, which is 137.34 grams per mole. I knew the oxygen, the atomic mass of oxygen already from calculating this up here, the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, and the same for hydrogen. Except this time it's a little bit tricky because we have this subscript 2, which means we need to multiply the mass of oxygen times 2, since there are two oxygen atoms in barium hydroxide, and we need to do the same with the hydrogen. So as you put this into your calculator, put this in once, put 15.99 in twice, or two times 15.99, and then add two times 1.01. So as I added these up, I put this in, I multiplied two times 15.99 in parentheses, and then I added it to two times 1.01 in parentheses, and my calculator gave me 171.34 grams per mole for barium hydroxide. So now I can put that as the next conversion factor. Let's go back to black here. So I want to get rid of moles of barium hydroxide. So I put that on the bottom. I put moles on the bottom, put what you want to cancel out on the bottom. So we cancel out moles of barium hydroxide and we just figured out from the molar mass that's 171.34 grams of barium hydroxide. So now we've got the only unit left, we've canceled everything but grams of barium hydroxide that's what we want. It said how many grams of barium hydroxide. So now we're good to just go and calculate. So when we, we've done all of our, our difficult work canceling out the units, now we can just look at the math here. And I'm not going to write times 1 because you don't need to multiply by 1. So the top, it's just going to be 14.5 times 171.34, and that's all over 39.99 times 2, and that's it. So just to do the math and to get the numbers in grams of barium hydroxide, I just multiply 14.5 times 171.34, Three, four, I hit divide and parentheses with the other two numbers, 39.99 times 2, and close parentheses, and I get 31.06 grams of barium hydroxide. So what's important is that you understand the process. We started with grams, then we went from grams to moles of that reactant. Started with grams of reactant, we went to moles of reactant using the molar mass. We figured out the molar mass by using the periodic table, looking these atomic masses up and adding them up. Then we used our fabulous coefficients here in the balanced equation to go from moles of reactant to moles of product. And we just are using the coefficients from the uh, balanced e reaction. Then we go from moles of product to grams of product, again just using molar mass, going to the periodic table, adding up all the atomic masses for the different elements within the compound that's the reactant. So grams of reactant to moles of reactant, moles of reactant to moles of product, 